Excuse me, sir. That's my workspace. I'm gonna need that. <laughs> and another angel. Hello. Right. Let's see. This is what I want. Hey guys, how you doing? Um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm not feeling super formal today. And I felt like doing something that would um, maybe be a part redemption and part uh, using up some supplies I have. I have a ton of beads here. I figured I might as well do something with some of them. Uh, and I saw online there was this really cool um, like Morse code bracelet uh, where it would like have messages written in the bracelet and I wanted to see if maybe I could make that work. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about what I'm doing. Um, basically for this Morse code bracelet design, I am going to need two pieces of string. Uh, this is waxed and I got this from Amazon for an older video. Um, so I just kind of measured around my wrist and cut where I thought it fit and left a little bit of room for cutting and adjusting. And I also got a piece of, I want to say this is probably 22 or 24 gauge gold wire that you can barely see on the screen. Um, I needed it to be tiny because the holes on the beads are very small, so um, I used my smaller wire and that is going to go in the middle of these two to create a kind of layered bracelet. Um, you're also going to need these crimp beads. I got a lot of these off of Amazon. In a, in a big set. Um, I did test to make sure that everything fit in these. This is just a standard size um, and they're very tiny so I guess be careful. Oh no, there it is. Um, and uh, I need two of those, one for each end. You're going to need jump rings of course and I am going to go with a lobster clasp closure, one of these, just to make it easy. Not necessarily easy to attach but definitely uh, you know, attached to yourself, but easy to attach in general. Um, I have my jump rings uh, still in here and I'm not going to try to pick them out. And you're obviously going to need to pick whatever you want your Morse code bracelet to say. Um, this is what I translated it to. It was actually my nephew's name. I thought it would be nice to have a little thing to wear around my wrist to remind me of him since I don't get to see him a whole lot. And I did decide to go with mostly golds because I think it'll look really nice on the gold um, bracelet or the gold wire and I think it'll I think it would look too dramatic if I started putting too many different uh, colors in there so I have these long beads for the dashes and I think I'm either going to use yeah I think I'm going to use these um, because they're a similar enough color since they come from the same set and I'm going to create this pattern on my wire and then I will show you how the entire bracelet gets assembled. First things first, I'm going to attach the beads. So I have my long ones here and I'm just going to follow this pattern that I wrote down. Of course it's very tiny so I got to pay relatively close attention. Okay, so I have two dashes to start and then two dots. So and then I'm going to move over to these. All right, and here I have all my dots and dashes on here. I did notice as I was going through, some of them were misshapen. Some of them are like surprisingly darker than the rest. I don't know if maybe this is wrong, but it seemed to blend in really nicely. And some of them were a little too white and I really wanted them to match the gold color. So I ended up kind of picking them off and, and returning them back on when I found the right shade of bead. And I put like my reject beads off to the sides. There were some like, some of them even, these two are stuck together, which may have saved me time, but they weren't even, like they're kind of crooked on one another and that bothered me. I also thought it would be fun to like add, to like maybe do something a little more and not make it so entirely subtle and maybe attach uh, a different like charm or something to it just to kind of add something. I might do it to one of the uh, pink sections though. I think that would be nice if I added just this little like gemstone on there just to add a little something extra and get rid of some of the charms I have in my bead collection. So what's next is I'm going to go through the frustrating and grueling process of putting the pieces of string into 
the crimp bead and that doesn't sound so horrible since I put this first one in but it's uh, it's getting the second one in and making sure that the uh, wire is stationed between them that's the hard part as you can see this shape is just a little too big I'm gonna slip that in there and now it's separating oh boy oh boy I think the important part is just getting most of it in there and then being able to grab it out from the other side. Ah, I got a little bit pull and just hope that most of it comes with. Okay, great. That is the hard part. All right, and now to slip the wire in there without disrupting my beads and slip it in here between. Awesome, okay. Now all you have to do, I try to make sure they're about the same length just to make it easy, and uh, you do leave a little bit of extra on the ends here. Now I'm taking these needle nose pliers and I'm going to crimp this nice and flat. Yeah, there's that, and now I'm just gonna, I guess, do that to the other side. I actually messed up on the uh, real bracelet, but I'm going to show you the best way to do it using my sampler here. So what you're gonna wanna do is actually make a knot with the two uh, string pieces. Relatively tight, but it doesn't have to go all the way up. Um, this is going to kind of give you a little bit of a a static point for you to hold your jump ring. I will be using this large uh, blackish one for demonstration purposes. You're going to open it up with your needle nose pliers and with your bracelet you're going to stick one end through the knot. That way it doesn't try to retreat down your bracelet and you will close it back up and that will be one side. Now for the other side, you will add your jump ring again and this time you will grab a lobster clasp, leave it open and you will drop your clasp in there. Just like that and close it back up nice and tight so that nothing falls out. And once you do this on both sides, you should be able to have a fully functioning bracelet. As for my actual bracelet here, I did what all great crafters do when things go awry and I put a dab of hot glue on it just to attach my two little pieces together. Perfect, great, wonderful, beautiful, and before I actually try this on, I'm going to take this charm and do, it's got a little jump ring on it already, I'm going to do the same thing I did last time with the rest of the jump rings. Use my needle nose pliers to open it up and I'm just going to pop it middle of my bracelet it actually wasn't as hard as I expected since it's got the wire on it I was kind of able to bend it around my wrist the right way so that I could snatch it in the lobster clasp really nice and easy my lobster clasp was kind of stuck so I kind of had to mess with it first but I really didn't want to waste a whole bunch of memory on my uh, recording device uh, trying to show you how I attached it um, but it actually it looks pretty good maybe aside from this glue dot here but I could always clean that up and fix it a little bit but I think this was a really nice touch I think it kind of makes it look a little bit more put together and I think the fact that I have the string on it and not just a super thin wire um, I think it adds a little something extra to the bracelet and makes it look a little bit more substantial even though it's really quite thin and dainty yeah I'm actually quite pleased with this and it's for someone who doesn't particularly enjoy um, wearing bracelets a whole lot I think this is quite dainty and quite pretty but it came off and came back together really nicely actually probably easier than a lot of bracelets I purchased before um, I actually think it's kind of cute I might wear it around a little bit and uh, brag to my sister that I have her son's uh, name wrapped around my wrist at all times as usual, bare minimum, I hope that I have inspired you or given you some cool ideas for some crafts that you can do in the future. So thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. I put out new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Almost forgot that again for a second. I keep forgetting. <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you here next week. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. Bye!